Howdy folks, Little John in the brewery and uh, today I'm filling bottles from keg uh, now this is not the first video I've done on this um, but since the last adventure which was uh, a little bit of interesting and fun and I've certainly not done the, under the ideal situation I have bought myself a bottle filler gun this fella here uh, now this supposedly will make the job a lot easier and a lot better uh, so gonna give her a whirl so I'm kegging up uh, corn ale this is the uh, second half of the batch I did a while back uh, and I put this aside for the brother so this is when I was starting to play around with the uh, other setup I had with the picnic tap and whatnot and decided that was just not going to work uh, so I stopped, stopped that left this keg got the got the bottle gun now I've, had, I've got this before Christmas and I just haven't had time to get around to it so here we are today so uh, just to run through how this filler sets up so what I've got is runs gas off this point now we've got to have gas for purging the bottle basically this the idea of this is that this goes into the bottle uh, hit it with gas uh, fill the bottle with gas and then follow through with, uh, with your beer so you're removing any oxygen from the bottle as you go so I've got gas bottle here so that gas bottle will run to the gas gun and it also runs off to the uh, to the keg to provide pressure obviously for pumping beer into here the beer comes through this side obviously up from the keg uh, so have a gas line which has a splitter in it uh, to run both of those both off so fairly simple setup I've just used a simple duo type fitting a two-piece uh, and the gas line just just flip straight into the duo type fitting push in uh, and just got a disconnect on the end um, so I you could could have set this up I've, I've just used a standard disconnect on the uh, on the keg end and I've actually attached it with a clamp uh, because in the same with the uh, with the B disconnect I've used a clamp on that as well I could have used uh, the duo type push-ins uh, and just left these as something I could just attach as I needed them but given that uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more beer under pressure and a lot of beer will be going to my to my younger brother so I'm going to be bottling a lot more beer from either from kegs or from a pressure fermenter um, this is a, probably a bit of gear I'm going to use reasonably often so I've made it sort of more permanent uh, the, the push in gas fitting is just easy because that, I can just change that over and I've got that on any of the fittings I'm using for gas as part of the pressure it's just a slip in and this is my little 2.6 two, two, little bottle that I use because it's nice and easy, I've got a 6 kilo bottle on the kegs so this is nice and easy too, it's portable, it moves around so it's a fixed system to some degree uh, and I'll, I'll be able to just pull it out. I'll just I'll be able to do this today, flush some star sand through it, and put it away. And next time, next time I'm going to bottle up, just pull it out, hook it up, and away you go. Uh, one or two minutes, organised, and we and we set. So kegs here, kegs cold. Got, I've got 24 bottles, one carton, which is all I'm bottling. Uh, there's probably a little bit more than that in there, but it won't be much so that shouldn't be a problem the bottles were cold I was out here uh, an hour and a half ago to do this I just sat down I had the bottles in the fridge overnight I, so everything was cold because the colder the better it just helps reduce supposedly reduces foaming um, and no said as soon as I got out here I actually sat down and started to do a video um, and I got pulled out and had to do it had to do some other stuff um, so the bottles aren't cold 
but hopefully it won't make too much difference. So, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. Now, I can't keep these reasonably together because I've only got a short length of gas on there. So, pop them down on the floor, out of the way. And, that's just to give myself a little bit of extra room to work. A gas line, a gas line, B line, onto the B post. Now, the gas bottle down here, I've, I've, when I pop it onto the keg, it's showing around 20 psi. Now, I'm pretty confident that there isn't 20 psi gas in that bottle. Um, I'm thinking, obviously, there's only a small headspace. Um, and since I've pulled it out, there's probably been a gassing off out of the keg, and I think that's just given me a sort of a, a false sort of a reading. I'm hoping that's not completely right, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to purge the PRV, get any gas out of that keg, so I don't want it pouring that pressure. I want it nice and low, so we'll get rid of that. Oh, good, no, no gas or no pressure in there at the moment. I want to get this, I only want about 2 psi. Which is around there. That should be that's about what I want. So I should be, should be good to go. Got a glass here so I'm going to have a bit of a test and see what we're looking at. Um, and trying to get a, a flow going on this gun. And get an idea of what it's going to do before I actually go to the bottom. That's it. So the idea is gun sits in the bottom of the bottle. You give it a yeah, two seconds of sour gas to put a layer of CO2 in the bottom, uh, which then will push up with the beer. We pull the beer, and there she goes. And right now she's fairly foamy. Now I'm hoping that that will settle. Okay. I'm going to pull the gas off the bottle and just leave the keg pressure. It's not maintaining pressure through the line, which is going to be an issue. But that's what's going to cause foaming at every fucking option. I think that's going to work. Okay, a bit better there. Realistically, I think I need to probably move reasonably quickly doing this. So, gas in that view and that was part of what I wanted to test, I wanted to see if there's enough gas in this to just bottle as is or whether I do need to get 
you know, maybe a little bit of uh, sugar into the bottle. But I'm thinking it might be all right. There's a little bit of crud there, so it looks like I put a little bit of crud initially. That was also part of the reason I wanted to pour a glass. One, to check out the carbonation, and two, to see, well, just to clear a little bit of crud, crud from around the bottom of the dip tube. Initially, there's always that little bit on your first sort of pour or so. Um, but the beer itself is looking fairly clear. Okay, there's gas there when you well, agitate it, so we think we're pretty good. So, let's go, first bottle. So, that's it. Bottle in, shot of gas, and the beer. Timing way more than one would have liked. Now I'm getting the buddy run back here. Keeping pressure through to the gun. Which I think is that is that bloody line. Mind you, it seems to be coming from the gun itself. It's sort of coming through. You can see the air bubbles. Certainly seems to be coming up through the gut itself. And I don't know why, because that should be sealed. With that constant flow just means I'm getting air in the line which then causes excess foaming which is certainly something we're trying to avoid Good flow once it gets going, but initially okay, now that's not as bad as that laying down. Okay, so I wanted to be certain that it was just a high thing. As soon as I put it that way, I'm getting there. That's interesting. Very interesting.
taken the gas off all together and just let them the pressure in the actual beer push um, but I don't know how long that's going to give me gas to purge with to the bottles ok and that's now pouring very slow but it's much more controlled so ok Really got to get a little bit more control over that gas. I don't think the feedback is helping, but it's definitely not as big a problem. If you can see that. That's definitely not getting the same foaming issue. I'm also getting very now getting very slow slow so I'm just trying to get the slightest amount of gas on there Okay, so that's definitely more controlled, so just gonna make sure I've got a little bit less gas there. I think that's gonna be much better. made some progress. Okay, that's definitely not producing as much foaming. There's clearly gas in the beer. Um, I've got a clear bottle here, I'll get that in a second. I'll just sort of get a little bit of a better feel for how this is going to go. Okay, so, I think that one's good. So, I'll pour a clear bottle in a second. I think that'll sort of show a bit better how the gas is getting in there while we're doing this. Here we have with all things brewing, a little bit of uh, playing around, a little bit of experimenting, uh, gets you to the result you're after. So, I'll just get these ones topped there up and I'll get a clear bottle out and have a look. Let's see if we can run off the full bottle. Now getting 
result we're after. Which is good. Got no problem here, as they say, capping on a bit of foam. Uh, as well, there's foam in there, there's a very good chance we've got CO2. Um, so, I'm pretty confident we've got no oxygen in those bottles. So, here's our clear bottle. Oh no, so you can see there plenty of gas bubbles coming with that as we're going. So we're getting some good, definitely getting CO2 in there. So the good carbonation level, I think that's not going to be an issue. Uh, and definitely, certainly less foaming with that. So I think we got that mostly under control. So I think we're at sort of at that level I want to be at. So I think, look at that, definitely, uh, definitely need that very low pressure. Um, there's barely even a register on the, on, the, on the actual gauge itself. Uh, so, that's it. Right, uh, time to go through, finish these off. Um, you get them all done. So I'll uh, probably hold um, one bottle of this back. Uh, we'll bro miss out on one bottle and um, do a bit of a tester on it. I don't know, maybe two weeks down the track, see how it's gone, how it's held its, um, how, how well, it's, well it's held the gas, um, and see whether there is enough CO2 in the bottle from the uh, fermentation process with that, and just about handles with the bottling, and whether we need to look at uh, adding a little bit of priming, or whether I need to up the actual gas in the keg before bottling it. But um, I'm thinking at the moment, I'm thinking I'm looking, I'm liking the look of where we're at. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, looking at that last bottle, the actual filling process isn't going to take too long. Now I've actually got it worked out. So uh, that's not too bad. Um, I might put a timer on and, get, and roll through the rest of this and I'll put a little bit of a comment. down below um, to think about about um, how long it actually took just to bottle through. I've done five bottles so I've got 19 to go. Uh, just get an idea of how long that sort of takes to finish off. But that's uh, that's it. Uh, um, cheers everybody. Uh, Patreons, thank you for your support. Uh, as always, <coughs> links down the bottom if you're interested in becoming a Patreon. Uh, subscribers to the channel, always big thumbs up to you guys as well. Links down there in the corner if you're not a subscriber. Hit the, uh, hit the, hit the thumbs up and like button if you're watching. Uh, 
that all helps all helps out so well that's me any questions or any comments as always stick them down the bottom uh, but for now that's little John done so uh, pressure transfer using the bottle filler gun uh, with a little bit of fiddling seems to be successful so anyway that's me until I see you again brewing beer talking beer we drinking beer good brewing <laughs>